Hello and welcome to our podcast describing the re request dumper application for Google Application Engine. So this uh, request dumper, um, you download it from um, appenginelearn.com. I uh, got a temporary URL for now because I'm still setting the website up. But basically uh, we'll down download the source code here. Um, I'll get that download started. I'm going to save this zip file to my desktop. Save it right to my desktop. There we go. Okay, so there it showed up. AEO2 dumper. Now, students have to realize, those of you who are not familiar with Windows, when you double click on this, this actually, these are not a real folder. This is just showing you the contents of the compressed file. So to really make, put this folder, these, this data in the file system, I'm going to copy it into a real folder. The, the way you know the difference between a real folder and a, and a compressed folder on Windows is the compressed has this little zipper on it and, and uh, Windows XP it has something similar. So um, so basically I've got this real apps directory folder that's sitting on my desktop and I've got from my previous podcast um, the AE01 Trivial with a couple of files in it and now I'm going to copy this AE02 dumper in there as well and um, I'm done. I'm going to close this and I'm actually going to throw away this zip file and get it off my desk just because I'm kind of obsessed with uh, clean desktop. So in my apps folder now, that's a real folder, I've got AEO2 dumper and it's got two files in it. It's got app.yaml and index. And so let's talk a little bit about what this program is going to do. Um, it is, it is going to, to run in the server, in the App Engine server, and it's going to basically dump out the data it gets on a GET or a POST request. Just to review, when you click something in your browser, whether it's a href, or a link, or a posted data, um, that data is bundled up and sent to the server over a TCP IP connection with either a GET, in the case of an href, or a POST, in the case of a form submission. Then the program runs and does its thing, and then out comes the response, which is HTML. And so we're going to grab it right here as it pops in and dump this at kind of the lowest, most raw level of what's going on in the server. Now, this is uh, actually using a capability called CGI. And here we have uh, whohoo.ncsa.uiuc.edu slash CGI. And this is some really old documentation. I remember this documentation from uh, 93, 94, where we were just writing the first server-based programs. And, uh, and so CGI was uh, kind of in brand new, and, and it's got some, the documentation is old Scott school, it's not too fancy, there's no PDFs, it's just flat HTML. But what CGI basically tells us is how to take data from an incoming request and um, what variables to put this in. So for example, it says, how do I get information from the server? And query string is one place, and etc. So this is a little, a little miniature specification. How do you send the document back with a content type at the beginning and some HTML? And of course, this is old, so it's got uppercase HTML. The point is, is when we do this, I'm not going to recommend that this is the way you write programs in App Engine, but it's a good way to sort of see what's going on at the low level and then later appreciate the frameworks that Google provides us that deals with some of this uh, information. Okay, so I'll hide this now and I'll hide this. And so I basically have got my AEO2 dumper sitting in a folder on my desktop. Okay, so I'll miniaturize that. So now let's do some editing. I'll use JEdit. And I've still got my uh, applications from the first test, so let's get rid of those. Now I've downloaded this software, and I'm going to go into Apps in my desktop and go to AE Dumper. Look at the app.yaml file. Um, it looks just like the first one we wrote, um, except I changed the uh, application name, so I'll just close that because it's completely unexciting. And then we have index.py. Now this one is a little more exciting. Okay, and so this has basically three parts. The first part is printing out a form so that we can test post. Now the interesting thing is if you take a look at the CGI rules or the 
HTTP request response rules, the first bit that the server is supposed to say is a series of headers that are something something colon text HTML or whatever. You end the headers by printing a blank line and then your HTML begins. Now of course this is raw, nasty, not very well formed HTML, just enough to get the browser into quirks mode and get the data that I want. And I've got a simple form. Oops, this has got the file stuff in it. Hang on, let me fix this real quick. This is the more advanced version. Hang on, sorry about this, that you have to see the more advanced version here. So we're just going to put two simple text fields. Let me save that. Two simple text fields. We'll show you the file version later. Two simple text fields and a submit button. Okay, and that'll print out. But then the next thing we're going to do is, and that'll come out at the beginning, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to loop through what, what are called the environment keys. And these are the oh, os.environ is a hash map or a dictionary in Python, and so we're going to iterate through that using the keys method in the dictionary and just print out the keys and then the values in those keys. Now, if you are doing a post, the post data comes in this sys.standardin. Okay, sys.standardin is the um, input and it has post data, and we'll see. And I, I just have a counter here so that I only print uh, up to 100 lines so I don't get too crazy. Okay, so that's it. So I've got this, remember, on my desktop, in apps, in AEO2 dumper. So I'm going to start a command prompt. I'm going to CD into desktop. I'm going to CD into apps. That's to get into the apps folder. I'll do a dir if I can get it right. And now I've got AEO2 dumper and AEO1 trivia. Both of those are folders that have themselves a, uh, a full application in them. Now I want to start um, the AEO2 dumper. So if you remember from the last podcast, we're going to type a long path here. Program files tab go tab backslash go tab backslash dev underscore a tab. That just happens to be the complete path of where the App Engine server happens to be living. And then I'm going to type AE dash O2 tab and start up the dumper. So here we go. The dumper should be starting up now. So there we are. And it's running on localhost port 8080. So let's go ahead and start up another tab here. I'll move this tab over to that side. HTTP colon slash slash local host colon 8080 slash uh, local host is misspelled. There we go. So you see that um, we got a get request right there. We got a get request. And this is the HTML that came out. Okay. So in it we can see the form. The first part is the form here. The second part is looping through the environment keys, like a query string that was specified in the protocol in the uh, in the CGI document. Where was that? All right. Oh, let's go back. Go back. Query string is defined as anything which follows the first question mark in the URL. Well, we didn't put anything there. We'll do that in a second. Okay. So this is all of the environment keys. Um, some of these keys are about the server. Some of the keys are about the particular request. And then some of the keys, like HTTP accept or user agent, like these keys, oops, HTTP user agent or HTTP accept, these are the browser communicating with us. So we get three sources of information. Tell us about the browser, tell, about, tell us about the server we're running on, and tell us about the request that we've got. And since this is not a post request, we've got no data. So let me throw something on the end of this URL. I'll just put, you know, Fred was was here. Okay. And so now the only thing that changed here is the query string says Fred was here. Now commonly don't just say things like Fred was here, but we say, you know, parameters, etc., etc., etc. So now we'll do one more thing. 
and that is we will put some data in here and then we'll submit a post okay so here I'll make the screen a little smaller so we can watch the come on so we can watch the log so we did a get see the get had Fred was here and it showed up in the query string and now I'm going to submit the query no, I don't want to turn autocomplete on. So it did a post. We can see that in the log. And if we look, the request method is now post. Um, and we posted to slash, because that's what we'd hard coded in the form document. And now if we scroll down, we see some data. And so we see the uh, the names of the fields in the form and we got keyword value pairs down here and so there you go so um, that is basically the dumper now let's go ahead and make a, a small change and I've got some comments down here at the bottom that make life a little easier I'm gonna do the form a little bit differently if you're gonna I'm gonna send a file so if you want to send a file make this a little wider you've got to change it to multi-part form data which you'll see that changes the format of the post data so that it can actually handle files if you don't make that change it can't handle files it can only handle simple keyword value pairs and then I'm going to add an input tag for the file I'll put this right after the second input tag Oops. Need a print statement. Okay, so now I should be able to just hit refresh and see. Uh, sure. Okay, so now we got some file data. So we've added our form. Again, that shows how in the App Engine you can just you know change your Python or change your templates when we get to those, um, and just away you go. So I'll put in some. Blah blah, and then some stuff in here, and I will browse my file, and let's go to my desktop, and I've got not much good stuff on the desktop, but I do have the request response picture, and now I am going to submit the query. So here we are. I'm going to do a post. Okay, so if we take a look at the data that comes back here, it's a post, and we're learning about that post that its content type is no longer, uh, it's multi-part form data, and it shows us this boundary thing. And that's a string that it uses in the rest of the data to know when it switches from one parameter to another. And so that starts the data streams, and you'll see there is now a lot of data a lot of data, okay? Because we sent a JPEG image. Let's take a look at how this turns out. So instead of a keyword value, we get this separator thing, then we get a content disposition header that tells us what kind of data we've got and what the name of it is. Then you see the first form tag, a uh, form data. Then you see the next, you see a separator again. Then you see the next one, and there's the content that I typed in the second field. Now, we're going on to the third one, which is the file. And it's telling us that that's the name of the file, where that file came from on my desktop. Lots of stuff, all good stuff. And it's telling us that it is a JPEG as well. And then it's starting to show us the JPEG data. Actually, EXIF is a little bit of metadata. So there's all kinds of, you know, if we were JPEG people, we would know what this meant. But that's just sort of raw, nasty dumping of JPEG data. So you see that when we switch to multi-part form data, it posts sort of in this sequential order where it has, you know, the first parameter, first parameter, then the second parameter, and then even the file. And each one is separately identified, and we're given some header information that tells us something about the input data. Okay? So this wasn't particularly about showing you multi-part form data. This was more about showing you how you can, in a very simple way, um, 
dig through both the CGI keys that you've got and the CGI and the CGI post data and dump that out. And so that's pretty much um, the dumper program. And uh, later, we will do things with the uh, Google Framework. Let me show you App Engine, G I N E, even though we're in Microsoft. There we go, App Engine. Getting started. Hello World application, or using the Web App Framework. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do an application that uses the Web App Framework. And this is a much more complex, it seemed more complex, but it's actually in the long run far less complex because we don't have to remember the rules of things like multi-part data or the separator or anything like that. We could literally write it, but someone already has done a lot of the nasty protocol details and given us an abstraction um, called this uh, WGSI application that handles a lot of things. Okay, so uh, that will be a, uh, a later assignment, later podcast. Um, uh, thanks for your time and see you on uh, appenginelearn.com. Uh, Bye.